Hey there, it's Weather for Weather Geeks on this Thursday, and we're going to talk a little bit about everything today. We've got a lot to talk about. It's a busy day. It's going to be a busy weekend. First things first, NOAA released their uh, winter forecast today, and uh, here's what it looks like in terms of uh, temperatures across the country. This is a tough uh, winter to forecast. There's no El Nino this year. There's no La Nina this year. And those are two uh, things that can really help out forecasters to try to determine what kind of a winter it's going to be. So no strong signals to kind of hang your hat on. Uh, we do expect uh, drier than average conditions down in uh, parts of the southwest in Texas. The drought that exists down there will likely expand uh, this winter. Uh, as far as temperatures go, we're looking at that map right now. And uh, we're looking for uh, warmer than average temperatures in the south uh, and perhaps up in New England and uh, perhaps cooler than normal, normal temperatures up across the northern plains, the uh, northern Rockies. But across Ohio and Pennsylvania, we have equal chances. Well, that doesn't mean that it's going to be a normal winter. What that means is there's a 33% chance that it'll be a normal winter. There's a 33% chance that it'll be a warmer than average winter there's a 33% chance that it'll be a cooler than average winter. So there's uh, just no strong signal to uh, send us one way or the other. It's a tough forecast. Uh, you know, I, I personally think that uh, we'll have a winter that may be somewhat similar to last year in that uh, we will have snowfall that may be a little bit above average, but not tremendously above average. And uh, temperatures will end up probably getting close to average when you add it all up at the end of the season. We're going to have peaks and valleys as we do every winter. So tougher than average uh, forecast this winter, that is for sure, and that's reflected on this map. A lot of the country under those equal chances for uh, uh, the temperature outlook this autumn. All right, let's talk about what's happening right now, and uh, it's turned out to be kind of a wet day today. Uh, we've had showers that moved in early this morning, even a few sleep pellets mixed in around daybreak this morning, about 7, 7.30. And uh, we've had this chilly rain now kind of persisting. This has lasted a little longer than originally thought. Uh, certainly, uh, it's been a kind of a nuisance kind of a thing. But our kind of semi-warm front has just been sluggish to move north. It's been taking its time. And as a result, uh, it has been raining lightly off and on uh, throughout the day today. And we're under a thick veil of clouds. Temperatures are chilly. It's in the upper 30s and lower 40s as I record this at about a quarter till three this afternoon. Off to the west, steadier rain is along and ahead of our cold front out in through here, uh, lower Ohio River Valley, Mississippi Valley, and some of this is going to track our way tonight and heading into tomorrow. Well, it's not hard. You don't need a meteorology degree to figure out where the Arctic cold front is. Let's, uh, let's take off some of this information and to check out the temperature spread in the panhandle of Texas. 73 in Lubbock, Amarillo, 32 and there's not a big difference. That's kind of like driving from, oh, uh, Youngstown maybe to, uh, oh, let's say uh, maybe Detroit, uh, maybe Indianapolis. That's, you know, that's the, uh, the distance we're talking about here. Lubbock to Amarillo, 40 degree difference. So our cold front is, of course, right in through here, real easy to find. And uh, that front is coming south. It's coming east. And we are definitely going to feel the chill by this weekend. Check out these temperatures in the northern Rockies. It's in the single digits. It's in the teens. This is the coldest air mass of the season so far, invading the U.S. And again, it is coming east. All right, let's talk about uh, what's going to happen as we roll on into the future. We'll bring up a high-resolution computer model here. And uh, we'll see what the radar should look like as we go into this evening. Zoom in on Ohio and Pennsylvania. Let's uh, start this off with about sunset this evening. At about uh, 5 o'clock, at this point, finally, it's taken most of the day, but finally, uh, most of our rain trying to push off to the north of I-80 at this point. Any leftover drizzle uh, will be real light, and again, mostly around Metro Youngstown and along the I-80 corridor. Farther south you are, the quicker you're, quicker you're going to dry out uh, this evening. So that's uh, early this evening, around sunset. So later on this evening, here we are at uh, 8 o'clock this evening. Not much going on. Uh, there could be a touch of drizzle, but uh, a large dry slot looks to develop for a good chunk of this evening. And that may last through at least the first part of the overnight. I'll fast forward here to uh, 10 p.m. this evening. Again, not much going on with rain starting to approach again from the west. Let me uh, bring up a, a different model. We'll take a look at tomorrow's uh, outlook. Let's start with daybreak tomorrow. Here at uh, 7 a.m. right here. You know, tomorrow a lot of this rain is just going to, 
you know, it looks more impressive on the radar now than it will tomorrow morning. It's going to kind of fizzle a little bit. We're looking for a kind of a damp and cloudy day tomorrow, but it's not going to rain much. You know, as I fast forward here through the day, notice it's just not doing much across the region. There could be a shower or two, but that's about it. It's far from an all-day rain event coming for our uh, our Friday, and I'll end this animation with a 7 p.m. Friday evening. Again, maybe there's a shower, but that should about do it. So that's the outlook for the rest of the work week. Now let's talk about the weekend and the much anticipated cool down. Uh, here's Saturday's map. As we get into the afternoon on Saturday, the cold front's east of us, the cold air is spilling in, it's windy. And with the relatively warm Great Lakes, no surprise, this is a classic lake effect looking computer model here with green coming off of the lakes. This is not going to be a long-lived lake effect event. It's not going to be a real strong one. I, you know, there could be a couple of inches, uh, maybe north of, uh, of Cortland and uh, Vienna. Uh, but uh, even that might be a little bit of a stretch. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the snowfall totals here in just a second. But uh, the lake effect event it doesn't last long. It lasts through Sunday morning, and then we taper off to flurry Sunday afternoon. So we head towards Thanksgiving. This is when things become a little more interesting again. There will be a storm that tries to ride along the eastern seaboard. Uh, as I fast forward here to uh, Tuesday evening, this is the European computer model, and it brings some snow and maybe some mixed precipitation up into the Appalachian Mountains, the East Coast, we'll see a chilly rain. This is the European model. At the same time, here's the Canadian model, doesn't bring it as far north. And then here's the GFS model, which hardly has anything at all. So we certainly have our work cut out for us on the details of this. If the European model ends up being closer to the right idea, farther north, a little farther west, uh, we could be talking about some light accumulations of snow with this late Tuesday into Tuesday night. But again, the European, a little different than both the Canadian and the GFS. Here's Wednesday morning, big travel day Wednesday, of course, that day before Thanksgiving, soaking rain on the East Coast uh, with uh, the European model here. The Canadian has most of the moisture out to sea, some light rain along the coast. GFS model has almost nothing along the Eastern Seaboard uh, Wednesday for that very busy travel day. So uh, that's going to be a day to keep an eye on. Locally, worst case scenario, we see a, a small accumulation of snow Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. I think that's worst case. I think the odds favor just being uneventful here uh, during that time frame. And no matter which model's right, midweek, Thanksgiving and beyond, cold, bone-chilling cold. And uh, we'll talk about uh, those temperatures in just a second. Here's the GFS model, accumulated snowfall through Monday morning with our lake effect event. This is very modest, not much. Maybe there's a few inches up in northwest PA, down to about I-80. Maybe there's an inch, inch and a half. But uh, again, that that's about it. No big deal, really. Now, the European model for that midweek situation, again, if it ends up being right, some one inch or so amounts may try to sneak back towards the Mahoning Valley with the heaviest amounts out in central Pennsylvania and into upstate New York. But again, that's the farthest west and north solution at this point amongst our computer models. So that's probably not the most likely thing to happen. And then the wind chills. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the wind chills real briefly for the weekend. Here's Saturday's map. Wind chills in the lower 20s in the afternoon. Here's Sunday's map. These are afternoon wind chills on Sunday. No higher than the lower teens. Sunday is just going to be brutal to be uh, outside. And uh, if you're heading up to the Brown Steelers game, you're going to want to wear a lot of layers. Well, I, I ran over eight minutes here. Sorry for going a little long. That's weather for Weather Geeks on this Thursday. I'll see you tonight on 21 News at 6 and 11.